Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R's at Play, and today I want to give you some tips that I like to use to help myself get through my fear in art. We all have it. We've all been there, even professionals. We all get a little scared sometimes, and so I figured I'd give you my top five favorite tips that have helped me, and I'm hoping they will help you too. But before I do that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the piece that I'm working on. This is going to be a drawing of a lupin flower. It's one of my all-time favorite flowers. I have such fond memories of me and my best friends growing up and picking these in our neighborhood. I live in Maine, and it's a pretty common flower in Maine. And recently, we have been trying to grow them in our yard, even though they grow wild, like two feet down the road. For some reason, we've had a hard time growing them in our yard, even though everything else seems to do well in this yard. And this year we planted some and it seems to have taken. So I'm really excited and that's what this piece is from. I took some photos of my lupin out in my backyard and I am drawing it and I am thinking about all my fond memories of this flower. And so I am working with the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. These are a water-based India ink marker, and I am using an ampersand encaustic board. And you'll see me come through with various cheap brushes just to blend out, and a Faber-Castell precision eraser, and a few other things like a craft knife to scrape and things like that. I will link all of my materials in the description below. But this is not a tutorial on how to draw lupins. This video is about how to overcome your fear in art. And so let's get into that. So my first tip is to start small. Do thumbnail studies like in succession to lead up to a larger piece. And thumbnail sketches are like these little miniature studies to help you work out your ideas and compositional elements before moving on to a larger piece. So you can start really small if you want, like a two by three, and then work your way up in size while you're working out your ideas until you get to the point where you feel comfortable drawing the actual drawing or painting your actual piece. And this is a great way to work out your composition ahead of time and know exactly what you're after. You can even do value studies during this process, color studies and things like that, just to get all these things worked out ahead of time before you start on your final piece. I had a professor that had us do like over 50 thumbnail sketches or variations before our final piece. So, I mean, you don't have to do that many, but just do enough so that you feel comfortable moving on to your final piece with confidence. If you want to learn more about the benefits of thumbnail sketches, I do have a video about thumbnail sketches on my channel. I will link that in the description below. Another way to kind of start small is to simplify and do studies. If you are intimidated by doing like a full landscape, simplify it and work on just like one tree. Likewise, you can do this to practice for larger pieces. For instance, if you don't feel comfortable doing portraits, then you can practice different body parts in your sketchbook. You can draw a bunch of random noses or ears or eyes, whatever that you don't feel comfortable with. Just practice it before doing a full piece, and that'll help you to feel more confident when it comes time to do, you know, your finished piece. And then... Once you have the overall composition in place, another way that I like to work small or start small, I should say, is to kind of just break things down into chunks and then work on it one section at a time so the overall piece doesn't feel so overwhelming. And so you'll see that here. I'm working on my background first and I took it section by section of the background. I already had my composition worked out, so I knew how this would work, and I just focused on each section so I didn't go get overwhelmed by the entire background or by the entire composition all at once. Okay, so number two is to go blind. This is one of my favorite ways to loosen up. Oftentimes, it's perfectionism that is really holding us back from trying new things in art. And doing exercises to help loosen yourself up can really take the steam off before you work on a more serious project. This is also a great way to exceed your own expectations because you're setting the bar pretty low. And so as far as something like having something come out good, like you're not expecting it to come out good when you're not actually looking at what you're drawing. And it takes perfectionism out of the game. And when something actually turns out better than you expected, it's an instant confidence boost. And so one of my favorite ways to go blind, so to speak, is to do a blind contour study. This is where you don't look at your drawing while you're working on it. And you usually use just one continuous line without lifting your pen or pencil. And you use your, uh, your eyes to 
like trace the outline of your subject that you're looking at. You don't look at your paper. You just look at your subject while you draw the complete thing with one line. And here's an example of a piece that I did in school doing this. And this can actually help with your overall like muscle memory while drawing and your your accuracy down the line. So it's a really great exercise that I had to do in my drawing classes and I found it helped a lot. And then another variation of this is to draw by feel. I once had a professor have us do self-portraits without looking in the mirror or at a photograph. We were to use our non-dominant hand to feel our face while we were drawing and obviously drawing with our regular hand. And it was a whole different experience. It, 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 none of the pictures were great, but it didn't have to be. It was just kind of teaching you to feel your subject. And I thought that was just like a great way to loosen things up and a new way to look at art. And then you could completely blindfold yourself while you're working, not even looking at your subject, not looking, just working from memory and not looking at your artwork. And there's a couple plus sides to this. The first one being that it's not going to look good. So there's no perfectionism. You cannot expect it to look good. Again, if something even looks remotely good out of this experience, then it's an instant confidence boost. You can be like, wow, I drew that blindfolded. Look at me. I'm an artist. <laughs> but if it doesn't turn out good, whatever. And then you can look at your actual artwork and your actual artwork's always going to look good in comparison to what you did blindfolded. So that's just kind of a fun way to be creative without any expectations. And then some of my other favorite ways to loosen up and to kind of put perfectionism out the window is to use a really large brush while working because then you can't get the fine detail. It really loosens up, especially like if you're painting, obviously, because that's when you're going to use a brush. If you use an extra large brush, there's no way to get that fine detail. You're not going to be able to get nitpicky about it. And another one of my favorite ways, which I've done a video on before, is to work with my opposite hand. So if you're a righty, work with your left hand. If you're a lefty, work with your right hand. Again, perfectionism goes out the window and it actually gives you the opportunity to work from a different side of your brain. And it's just a really fun experience to loosen up and to see things in a new way. Okay, so number three. This pertains more to what type of supplies you're using. So if you are nervous about trying a new medium, I suggest that you give yourself all the advantages you can. Do swatches and studies. And then when you decide to do a full piece, start with a subject that you know really well. You don't want to make things harder on yourself by trying a bunch of new things all at once. So trying a new medium and then also trying a new subject, that could be a little bit overwhelming. So just work on something that you know really well. And then also I suggest using either a monochromatic or a limited color palette because that also will take a lot of the pressure out of things if you're just working with very few colors and keeping your values in mind. And then that will still give you the experience of working with the new medium and feeling out the properties and the techniques that you like to use with it while not having to worry about color selection. So, you know, choose maybe just a few colors or maybe one color plus black and white and see what you can do with that. I think that's a great way to explore a medium without giving yourself too many obstacles to overwhelm yourself. Number four is to create art that you don't plan on showing anybody else. Remember, no one is watching unless you want them to. So this takes the pressure off of having to perform or impress other people. Create art because you want to create that art and then decide after if you want to show people. Nobody has to see it if you don't want them to. Many artists keep like certain artworks to themselves, studies, things like that. And this is all like also where a sketchbook comes in handy. I have a lot of art and my I use my sketchbooks as places to explore and do funky things that I don't necessarily plan on selling, things that are outside of my regular style, things that I may not ever show. And that is something great to do. Have a sketchbook on hand where you can play and just let all inhibitions out the window and do whatever the heck you want and tell yourself, nobody has to see this. And even if you are working on something you know, that you had planned on showing other people, as long as it's not a commission, obviously. Just artwork that you like to do. Like, if this had come out like absolute crap, 
I wouldn't have had to show anybody. This wasn't a commission. This was a piece I wanted to do because it inspired me. It was a subject that I wanted to draw. I filmed it, yes, but I didn't film it live. I could choose not to show this video footage. I could have chosen not to show this artwork at all. And so I keep that in mind when I'm feeling a lot of pressure. And those of us who are on social media, we have that pressure a lot. However, choose what you want to show. You still have choices. You don't have to show everything. If you don't like something, hide it away. Don't even show your grandma. It doesn't matter. Just tell yourself that ahead of time and then decide what you want to show after. That way there you can get through that slump. Be like, well, I don't have to show anybody if I don't want to. And then after you decide if you want to show it or not. I find that helps me a lot. And then number five is to always remember that mistakes are the cornerstone to improvement. Every piece you do teaches you something and we learn faster through mistakes. They're not fun, but it's the quickest way to learn. And don't let the fear of mistakes hold you back from creating. Even the most experienced artists make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I made mistakes in this piece. Part of doing artwork is learning how to correct your mistakes or learning from those mistakes when you are working on future artwork. So embrace those mistakes. Know that you're learning something. Take what you can from them and learn what you can from them and then move on to the next piece. And then before you know it, you will be a better artist for it. So the main takeaway from all of this is to put steps in place to make yourself feel a little less overwhelmed. You don't have to do everything all at once. Start small, take baby steps. Go blind if you have to so that you can loosen up ahead of time before you work on a serious piece. You know, do exercises to loosen up and get yourself feeling creative with no inhibitions before you work on a finished piece. And then if you are trying new things and you're nervous about trying those new things, put steps in place so that way there you are not feeling overwhelmed. So like I said, work with a limited color palette. If you're working in a new medium, make sure that you're using a subject or doing a subject that you are really, really comfortable with so that that takes some of the pressure off of yourself. And create art that you don't plan on showing anybody else. And remember that mistakes are what help you learn. And those are some of my favorite ways to kind of let myself create and not hold myself back. I hope that you found that helpful. So let's talk a little bit more about this piece that I'm working on. As I said, I was really, really inspired by this little flower that we finally had growing in our yard. I am very much inspired by nature and main themed type things. And I just have so many memories of this. One of the first things I did when I finished this piece was send a picture of it to my best friend that I grew up with because she also loves them because we have a lot of great memories of this flower. And then even after I moved out of that old neighborhood, there was a field out back of my new house where there was plenty of wildflowers growing and especially lupins. Some of the most common lupins in Maine that I see that I grew up around was this color and then there's like a baby pink color and white, but they're, these come in so many different colors. Oh. And one of the other things that really drew me to this reference specifically is the lighting and the composition. So I took a lot of photos when I was getting ready to do this piece and I played with a lot of different compositions. And then I also did a thumbnail sketch of this and blew it up and transferred it and did adjustments as I needed. And so that's another thing. There are so many different tools available to you, so don't be afraid to use those tools. When I initially drew this in my sketchbook, I drew it small, and once I blew it up on the computer, I realized that the proportions were off a little bit, so I was able to use GIMP, my photo editing software, to actually lower or heighten, I think it was like the middle group of flowers was either a little too low or a little too high in my initial sketch. Not much, but just enough that once it was blown up, I was able to notice. So I was able to use a photo editing program to just kind of lift that grouping of flowers for when I blew it up. And then I printed it out and I transferred it onto my panel and had the sketch that I was looking for. So I freehanded it into my sketchbook, made adjustments digitally as I saw fit, And then obviously went to the hard work of actually 
you know, creating and rendering the flowers. And so use the tools and the tricks that are available to you. Don't be afraid. We have so many tools available to us now that the masters kind of pioneered for us and would have loved to have. And so know that you actually are supported in that way. And I just went through, I do have a few fine liners that I did some details with. And I'm using some of the Jane Davenport, they're like these little eye shadow sticks. They're like the soft tools to do some of the blending. I had a lot of fun with this. All right, so thank you so much for watching. That's this piece, and those were my tips for the day. Let me know what other ways you like to face your fears and what tips you have for other artists. I love it when people comment with other tips in the comment section below and help out other artists. Let's have a discussion about it. Thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful day. I will see you next week. Bye. If you found value in this video, please feel free to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and share so others can see it as well. Thank you.